Welcome to the most important podcast of your financial future. Today, we're going to teach you how to lose money. Pay attention, because these are the most valuable lessons you'll ever learn about creating wealth. Let's get started. Steve McQueen worked as a towel boy in a brothel in the Dominican Republic, got fired from a job selling pencils in a traveling carnival, and was thrown in the brig for 41 days for going AWOL from the Marines to visit his girlfriend. Steve McQueen landed his first paying role in a Yiddish theater where he had one line, nothing will help, in Yiddish, but after the fourth night, he was even fired from that. Steve McQueen became the most popular and highest paid screen personality of the 60s and 70s. He starred in The Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, Bullet, The Getaway, and Papillon. Hi everyone, welcome. I am Paul Moore. And I'm Josh Thomas. How to Lose Money is a podcast where we discuss defining moments of success through distinctive stories of failure with business owners, investors, and entrepreneurs. Today, our guest is Moran Pober, who's going to tell us how to lose money by buying a company, growing it successfully, then losing it. Hey, Moran. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're, we're, we're certainly glad to have you, Moran. And uh, every failure story that we encounter follows a predictable pattern. And because of that, we've developed a marker system with flags to help keep everyone on track as to where we are. Here's a quick overview. The green flag is our initial part of the story. The red flag is the first sign of trouble. The black flag is the point of no return where everything is dead. The white flag signifies total surrender and the moment we walk away. Uh, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about our guest today? Sure. Moran is the founder and chairman of ABD Assets. Moran is former IDF, which is an is- Israel Defense Forces soldier. He's had extensive dealings with many entrepreneurial projects. He founded iTips, Top 100 app in 100 stores around the world and the App Store. He's carried out extensive consulting assignments with many companies. ABD Assets is a leading independent firm focused on business transactions who seeks to acquire equity stakes in companies with growth prospects with a view to assisting them in their continued development, both managerially and strategically. Moran and his team are currently working to acquire businesses all over the world. So, Moran, it's so great for you to join us. Where, where are you uh, calling in from today? So, I'm currently in Tel Aviv, Israel, actually, my, my home base. Wow, it's great to have you. And uh, so, you've, you've, you're working on acquiring companies. What, what is one of the most interesting companies that you've either tried to or actually acquired? In general, they tried to. I tried to acquire pretty much companies in any sectors out there, anywhere from engineering companies, distribution, manufacturing, um, even some fashion companies and, and, and model agencies. I think that could be cool to have a, to have a model agency. But um, I think a great story to talk about is uh, my app company that I bought that became really successful and would be a great story to for your listeners in this podcast is the app company that I bought um, the app got really successful and then everything just went down. So um, I'm excited to tell you about that story. <laughs> so, well, let's, let's get into it. Why don't we? Uh, so we're at the, we're at the green flag. Moran set us up for this story. What year is it? Uh, where are you in your kind of career arc? And uh, what are, what are some of the, the good things and the, uh, the, the bright eyes and bushy tails of this story, so to speak? Yeah. So it was, um, Almost four years ago, um, I just basically I had a marketing agency at that time, and I just looked for more opportunities. The business was basically running without me, and I just, you know, like any entrepreneur out there, just looking for other opportunities out there. And I remember seeing a very, a very mediocre app in the App Store that ranks really, really high. And the app was basically just tips for the iPhone. It just gave productive ideas and tips and, and tricks on how to use the iPhone productively. Now, everything there looked really bad. I mean, the content, the design, um, the user interface, and I, I thought I could do something better. So at the same time, I researched different marketplaces for 
for any app or a similar app like that. And eventually what happened is that I bought the app and I kind of like turned it around, changed everything and went and compete with that mediocre app that was already ranking high in the app store. So that, that's, that's kind of like initially what, what drove me to even get into this world. I just saw a mediocre app ranking really high and I thought, hey, I could do better. All right. So seven or eight years after the iPhone comes out, there's, there's an app in the app store that everybody obviously wants because it's ranking really high. Uh, there's a lot of demand for it, but it's just not executing well. You saw an opportunity there to uh, fulfill a, a clear need in the market. And, and did you know anything about building apps before this? Um, no, not at all. I just, um, I had a friend who made a lot of money from apps and I knew there's a lot of money in there. I also knew about the fact that at least back then you had many apps in different categories that are doing basically the same thing, but they both rank really high. So I knew that even that there, the fact that there's existing app in the market, I could just bring in the same app, ideally make it better and just go in and, and compete with them. I knew that I have my marketing background um, and I knew that that could help me potentially make that app successful. Yeah. And, you know, as a, as an app store veteran myself, uh, I can, I can tell you that, you know, just, just writing a description in proper English, uh, makes a big difference for me, uh, because there's, there's so many apps out there and I'm trying to figure out what this thing does and I can't even read the description, you know? Yep. Uh, so those little details, they matter, right? 100%. And I could tell you, so one of the biggest reasons that helped us rank so high next to the, the competitor and eventually um, go in front of him is basically literally what you just said, uh, making sure that you got the right description, the right title, the right keywords. Um, the App Store back then was basically, was very similar to SEO back in the days to search and optimization. But basically anyone out there who just know how to optimize apps with good keywords, good description, you know, putting keywords in the title, keywords in the description, keywords in the keyword section, in the app store. Uh, that alone gave me a huge boost. And the fact that I sent also paid traffic to that app was a very uh, unusual thing, you could say, at least in that category. Um, now you have big industries and a lot of lots of money in there. Back then, the fact that I sent paid traffic to that app was something that isn't usual at all. So that, that and SEO and all that helped me a lot. All right. Okay. So, uh, you had a, you had a friend that made a lot of money with apps. Um, you saw this opportunity, you got in and, uh, you know, tell us about the, the first, the early successes with this. Obviously you started ranking higher, but what kind of revenue was this bringing in for you? Yeah. So the biggest jump was you asked when exactly it started to make money. The biggest jump was um, when Apple came up with their new iOS version. So I knew that Apple was about to come up with their new version and I just optimized everything according to the new iOS version. Um, so as soon as that happened, my rank, my app just got up there like crazy. And I mean, in good days, we had thousands of, of downloads every day. And I'm talking thousands of downloads for the free app plus thousands of downloads for the paid version. So we had a free version that everyone could download for free and we made money from advertising from that. And we had a paid version um, and people basically just paid $1 to, to download the app. And, you know, you download the app and you have no advertising and you have more um, premium content. So the best days uh, we made probably like... Um, three, four thousand dollars a day in revenues. Wow, that's impressive. And uh, it, so not every day was like that, but but some of the best days were. Yeah, so it really depends on where obviously your ranking is going up and down. Um, obviously, the days, uh, sometimes there's holidays. The, the, the fact that Apple came up with the new iOS helped a lot. So, you know, every special event helped a lot, but then it's like, it's going ups and down, but it's making obviously thousands a day, but yeah, the big, big days were just like, um, on a specific events. That's such a great entrepreneurial story so far anyway. Uh, so tell us about the, 
the first red flag that comes up as you're running this business, you're generating thousands of dollars a day. Uh, what was the first indication that, uh, you know, something was wrong? <laughs> well, um, first of all, the fact that Apple came up with their own version for that app. So like I said, my app was just giving tips for iPhone. And now anyone, if you, if you have an iPhone, you can check. I mean, Apple got their own version for that app. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, you know, just like thinking to myself, what's going on? I'm going to compete with Apple. Um, why would anyone download my app versus just use their free version? Um, so that, that was definitely a, a big, big initial uh, red flag. Yeah. I, and is this something that you, did you see this coming or was it a surprise? Not at all. Not at all. For me, I, I was very delusional. Um, you know, I thought, hey, I got a successful app. It's going to be there forever. Um, you know, kind of like um, being delusional about passive income and the four-hour work week kind of kind of lifestyle. And I had that lifestyle for a while. But, um, um, yeah, I learned a lot from that. Um, I so, didn't know at all. Yeah. It's always temporary. Yeah. You Everything is temporary. You said you were a big know-it-all. Is that what you said? Um, I, I said that back then I, I was just, I thought that nothing could, could stop me. Nothing could hurt me. Okay. Um, I was just, I just thought that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm an invincible kind of, kind of attitude. Uh, well, it, and you know, pulling in thousands of dollars a day for, for doing nothing. will 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 give you that ego. Uh, right, Paul. Yeah. No kidding. So, all right. Uh, and so Apple comes out with their own version of the app. Uh, and you didn't see it coming it kind of caught you off guard. Uh, let's, let's progress further into this story. Uh, as we move to the black flag, um, at, at what point did you kind of look at this and realize, um, okay, I, I can't compete. This isn't going to work. You know, what, what was that next kind of catalyst, uh, and realization in your mind? Yeah. So it, it happened all happened really fast. Apple just came by and told me, hey, sorry, you can't upload a new version of that app to your store. Um, obviously, they, they give you reasons why, but they basically tell me, hey, you can't upload a tip, tips app to the, the app store. Um, and when that happened, it just everything was pretty much gone in a day because I couldn't upload a new version for new iOS versions. And it, it literally went from making thousands a day to, to nothing in one day, just after trying to upload new versions. Um, and yeah, that's when I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess that business is gone. They, they boxed you out. Yeah. They, they just said, they just said, Nope, we don't want to compete with you. Yeah. In, in a very nice way. Yeah. <laughs> in a very, <laughs> okay. Interesting that you say that. What is a very nice way of saying, uh, we're not going to let you make thousands of dollars a day anymore. Sorry, get lost. It just, um, yeah, it's it basically just um, saying that you're um, not following that their their terms and conditions. You know, just little things like having specific keywords in the app or um, specific images or, or or anything that that would mention the fact that you're providing tips for iPhone. Just from the fact that I mean, why would they want? I mean. It's like they basically told me, who are you to tell us how to use the iPhone? I mean, we have our own version for that. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Wow. Okay. Uh, and so it sounds like there was really, uh, you know, the, the entire time you were really under their control anyway, and they just flexed their muscles and, and you're out. So we're... We're at the white flag moment here. It's 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 time to kind of dust your hands and move on. What was going through your mind at that time when you got this email and and you knew this, you know, that you knew that it was gone and you had to and you had to just kind of ditch the whole thing. Yeah. Wow, well, well, man. But back then, I mean, I was devastated. I, I literally didn't know what I'm going to do with my life. Um, you know, waking up literally depressed, thinking that everything I worked for, I worked for, is, is basically gone in one day. Um, really, really rough times. Um, like literally waking up. I remember um, days or weeks doing nothing with my life, just like thinking how that happened to me, why that happened to me, just acting as the as the miserable little guy. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened. And, and did you have, did you have any other sources of revenue at that time or had you, had you poured 
you know, all of your resources into this company? So when that happened, everything was in there. Like literally all my life was that. Oh, yeah. Man. And it's because you mentioned earlier, you, uh, you were looking for something to do because you had owned another company. Did, did you just, did you sell that off to invest into this app company? So part of it, um, part of it was actually another failure, which was, um, a, a big chunk of my income before that was actually a, a marketing company that highly dependent on SEO. Now, mm. basically SEO, I, I don't know if, how much you're familiar with that word is search engine optimization, but it, it's similar to literally what happened to me with Apple. My income was highly dependent on, on, on Google. And back then, um, you could rank websites really, really fast by, um, what's the right words I'm looking at? I, I don't like to say the word spam, but, but basically um, creating non-organic promotions to your websites. Black hat SEO, right? A exactly. Similar things to that. Or even if not, it's not black hat, um, back then what I've done wasn't, I mean, you, could, you couldn't consider that as black hat. But after some of Google updates, um, now you could say they're, they're kind of like black hat or spam just because, um, and I, I highly respect it and I think that's true. I mean, back then I was a little kid just trying to make money. Um, right. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I'm like, I highly respect that. I think that's the right move um, from Google. Uh, but back, back then it hit me really, really hard because I, I worked with clients. I worked... Um, I had my own websites promoting different products and I had really rough days with that as well. So every Google update, I just realized, Hey, um, I, it's funny that I was really dependent on Google. Then I moved to the app world. I was really dependent on Apple. And after those two situations, I was like, no more, I, I yeah. gotta be responsible for everything. I don't want to be in control of just one person who could basically shut me down in one day. Yeah, well, it sounds like you learned a really important lesson on that, and uh, you know, Paul, Paul, in a moment will expand upon that. But I just, I just wanted to ask, uh, just to kind of wrap up the story, uh, you did you have did you have any of this money saved, or were you just living an extravagant lifestyle? Um, so a bit of both. I was living literally like like a king. I, I couldn't. Uh, like I was spending a lot of money living in crazy locations around the world. Like I didn't have a home for more than um, four months over the last six, seven years or so. I traveled really uh, anywhere that I wanted, lived in crazy places, done crazy things. Um, so <laughs> looking backwards, I should have probably saved much more and be more modest with my life. Um, so I had some savings, obviously, but nothing that, you know, could could keep me for, for life. Um, and yeah, that's definitely an, another big, big lessons that I learned back then. If you've spent your life looking for the perfect investment, then look no further. Real estate investor, serial entrepreneur, and co-host of How to Lose Money, Paul Moore, has written his second book on real estate investing. It's called The Perfect Investment, Create Enduring Wealth from the Historic Shift to Multifamily Housing. It's available on Amazon or at his website, wellingscapital.com. And uh, how long how long did this uh, business run before it dried up? Um, you could say that it made good money for, like I'm talking in the thousands in revenues a day, probably uh, almost a year. Like they're really good money. Okay. And so. then, and then, so I had money after that and then probably the next year or two, you could say I was, you know, just like all over the place, didn't really, wasn't really forced to, to, to make any income. So you made something close to a million dollars, maybe a half a million to a million dollars. In revenues, yeah. In revenues, okay, not including ad spends and that sort of thing. So, so you've got a million dollar business one day, and then by that afternoon, you don't. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's that's a pretty substantial loss, wouldn't you say, Paul? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's painful. I uh, I I ran into a guy at the system seminar. You remember that, Josh? That Perry and some of those guys used to go to Ken McCarthy, I believe. 
Ken McCarthy in Chicago. Yeah, I was. I had breakfast with a guy. He was making four hundred thousand dollars a year, and he said he was work. He tried to figure out a way to work twenty minutes a day. I think it was. And, you know, I I I, I was really intrigued, and I thought, how do you do this? And he he was basically um, uh, an affiliate. He had an affiliate marketing thing going on, and I heard later that he just got crushed, and he was completely, you know. Yeah, you know, had nothing later. So, uh, I've been there with the affiliate board as well. I actually one of the other. Um, so I had lots of other ventures after that. One of my other um, businesses was again uh, really dependent on Google. We had, uh, um, I don't know if you're familiar with sites like Viral Nova and Buzzfeed. So just like yep. websites that got tons of viral news, and we had something similar that had Google AdSense ads on it, and we basically just did some kind of traffic arbitrage. We sent traffic from um, different sources like Facebook and Taboola, um, basically paying um, um, a cent for traffic for a click and getting paid two cents from AdSense. And we scaled that. I mean, like crazy. I'm talking to you. We spent in good days. We spent like um, six, seven thousand dollars a day, and made significant profit every day. And with that business, we got it to a point where it's making also um, around one hundred thousand a month in profit. And Google AdSense banned our account with uh, multiple six figures of of revenues that we were supposed to get. And that's another story, actually, that happened after the F word. Um, so I have, I have very, very bad experiences with, with F on Google. Yes. So basically, we could bring you on like every week for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I have tons of those. And I think, I think anyone is, who made some, some significant um, anything, any, anyone who made anything with his life, I think he got tons of those stories. Maybe not, not in terms of. Uh, deep, many, many, many different businesses, but even people who have just one business and they're working with that business for many, many years, I'm sure they have tons of failures. Um, it just like, I mean, like you mentioned, we're just failing forward. Uh, I think it's crucial. Well, that's a that's a, a great point, and I think it's a great uh, reason for us to transition into that segment. Paul, why don't you take us through it? Yeah, it is. You know, and Josh, isn't it the truth that uh, what we've learned from doing this, uh, you know, 50 some shows is that everybody who succeeded at anything uh, other than being a couch potato, I guess, has had significant failures and things that were done to them, things that they did wrong. And I think that we should all take comfort in that because um, we're all in the same boat. And, uh, I think the the most successful people have had the biggest problems. That's what I've seen. So, yeah, agreed. Well, I think uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you know the uh, the kind of reflection that you have here, Moran, uh, on your past experiences. But but one thing that really stood out to me is all of the businesses that you've mentioned so far were completely reliant on some other authoritative figure to say yes, you can play here. And it sounds like you've definitely already learned that lesson. So I'm looking forward to seeing how we can dissect that a little more. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Moran, we're, we're going to transition to a segment called Failing Forward. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And you can just answer each one briefly in a sentence or two, okay? Yep, I'll do my best. All right. So we talked about the fact that you were dependent on Google, you were dependent on Apple, you were dependent on uh, the AdSense program. Uh, bottom line though, why did this failure experience happen to you? To keep it short, I'd say I didn't build a brand with loyal followers and customers. So you built a brand, but it wasn't something repeatable, scalable, uh, didn't have repeat customers that would come exactly. back for more. Exactly. There, there was no reason for any of my clients to basically search me or look for me after all those um, failures. I didn't have an email list. I didn't have a way to get back in touch with those um, clients, like literally nothing. There was no reason for them to, to, to ever care about my, my websites, my businesses. I can already hear that you learned some lessons from that, no email list, et cetera. What would you say is the single most important lesson you learned from this failure? Um, I say diversification anyway, no matter what, no matter what business you have, 
um, like, especially with my first business, um, I remember as soon as I made money, I thought it's going to stay forever. I thought it's, you know, I'm going to make passive income for as long as I live. And you need to understand, I don't care what market you're in. I don't care what business you're in. You're going to have ups and downs in the end of the day if you're going to stay in that business for, for a few years. And I think one of the things that I learned from my mentor is as soon as you make some decent amount of profit, go and invest it somewhere else as well and build your wealth that way. I mean, try to diversify yourself at least a little bit more. Don't, don't be dependent on just one thing. So, Moran, is that how you're protecting yourself from failing in this way again? Yeah, I mean, I'm doing my best. I'm not saying that I won't fail again. I probably will fail. But um, I know that, first of all, um, I, right now I just try to diversify myself as much as possible. Yeah. And to be okay with the fact that even if one is going to fail, it's okay. Like I, I have friends in the, in the venture capital world. Um, and I myself look for uh, for some kind of investments, angel investments. And in that world, you need to expect in advance that nine out of 10 of your investments are going to fail. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that's my hope, but I want to get to a point where even if that's happened, I'll be fine. Yeah, well, so Moran, it looks like you've got a pretty impressive uh, board of directors at your company. Uh, who else do you turn to when you need help now? Um, so I'd say... I have tons of mentors and I'm probably going to take me a while just to mention all of their names. Um, but I have, I'd say one of them is, is Carl Allen is, is, um, is on my website on my board as well. He, he got ex huge experience in, in doing uh, acquisitions and M and A deals. And I've got some other local um, guy here in Israel. His name is Ori. Ori, it doesn't matter. You, you won't probably recognize, but he's a very um, big player in the VC, the venture capital board here in Israel. So um, those are my first go-to guys at the moment. Well, that's um, it's it's super helpful, and it looks like you've got people from uh, various continents. From it looks like New York, Israel, um, and that's uh, and, and you're buying companies all over the world as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's my focus at the moment. What we're doing is we're looking for um, good businesses we can buy um, pretty much all over right. the world. Yeah. Right. So what advice would you give to someone else who finds themselves in a similar position to when you got the notice from Apple that you were done? So you say, what would advice I'd give someone? What would you give? Yeah, because other other people have gone through this. I mean, we all so know. so in the rough in the rough time, right? Not not yeah. before. That. Well, let's say uh, let me let me clarify the question here, and I I think I think a lot of us would run into this, and I'm I'm from the marketing world. I'm very familiar with all the things that you've talked about, and uh, almost everybody that gets into this space has some reliance on Google or Facebook or Apple or some gigantic organization that that can say yes you can do this and no you can't do this uh, so what what advice would you give to somebody that that uh, that has to play in that space or at least feels like they have to play in that space I'd say diversify yourself as much as possible and build a following build build um, a brand that people will want to stay in touch with no matter what happens. Um, it, and many times it just means at, at this stage, just build your name, your brand all over the place. If that's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Apple, whatever your business is, right? Um, but get to a point where, first of all, where you just have really dedicated followers. I think when you have those kind of people who want to work with you no matter what, um, then no one will stop you. Um, no software, no company, because those people will know how to get back to you and, and work with you if they really want that. But I think uh, I'll just end, end it and say, I think the biggest lesson I learned is actually a mental lesson, is the fact that um, no matter what happens, you need to understand, first of all, that everything's going to pass. Um, and you got to find a way to to keep your to find happiness right now, no matter what. I think it's crucial. And back then, it, for me, when I was younger, I, I just, I didn't, uh, I wasn't, I, I didn't appreciate uh, things that I had. And I know that looking back, it, it's something that's it's more important than everything. Your actual mindset uh, in bad times and good times. Well said. That's good. Yeah. And uh, so, 
you've you've mentioned a little bit about what you're doing now, uh, and uh, you you have a company. It's called ABD Assets, and uh, tell me a little bit about the types of businesses that you're looking to acquire. And and before actually before you get into that, I'm sorry to interrupt, but why this? versus what you were doing before. And I think there's a very specific reason for it, but I, I want you to say it. <laughs> really good question. Um, and I might surprise you with my answer. I realized that I want to do something I enjoy doing. Back then with literally all of those businesses that I had, I had to run them day to day. And I, I won't lie, even in days that I made a lot of money, I hated my day to day. I was waking up I could even say miserable sometimes because I did things that I didn't like. Um, and I could say that I'm really, really grateful for those stories because that's what opened up this world of what I'm doing right now, which is the world of investing, buying businesses. And and it's funny, it literally, this world came to, came to me from watching TV shows like Shark Tank and The Profit and Dragons Den for a Canadian or, or UK version. And I just realized that this is what I want to do. I want to do that thing no matter what. Um, I don't care. I basically just started asking myself questions. What I do if money was no object? What I do if I, if I was already a billionaire? And I realized that this is what I want to do. I want to go out there. I want to buy businesses. I want to help businesses. Um, and I don't want to be the day-to-day manager. I want to be owner of businesses, but I don't want to be um, manager of uh, businesses, at least not in the day-to-day involvement. And I think this, this is the biggest reason, it's just in terms of fulfillment of what making me really happy right now with what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm excited waking up. Like I'm really, really excited. I'm, I'm literally more excited about doing what I'm doing right now than going to vacations. I, and there's, there's nothing wrong about going to vacations and lying on the beach and drinking some cocktails, but the fulfillment that I'm getting in, in my work right now by helping business owners, by sometimes saving businesses or helping them grow, or maybe um, giving baby boomers a better retirement option. Um, I really enjoy that. And I hope that answers your question, but this yeah. is the biggest, biggest reason of what I got to do right, right now. Yeah, and and I can certainly see that, but it it also doesn't hurt that when you buy a business, you're a hundred percent in control of it either. No, no, not at all. <laughs> that's that's what you know seems to be the overarching theme of your of your past choices is you're always relying on somebody else, and you're like, nope, I'm taking that out of the equation. I'm just gonna buy the business. I love that. I, I you just you just like eradicated the problem, you know. So that's. That's cool. And so, so how can people learn more about what you do? Um, so it, it really depends what people are looking for. I'm, I'm basically right now I'm looking for businesses to buy. So if, you, if some of the listeners got businesses that they're potentially looking to sell, um, or if someone, I just know I got emails from people who kind of like want to get into this world of buying businesses, um, just, just feel free to email me and let's see if it's a fit. Um, my, just email me personally. My email is moran, it's M-O-R-A-N at abdassets.com, um, our company uh, website. Okay, and great. And uh, if they go to abdassets.com, or is there some information about you and what you do that they can learn more? Yeah, abdassets.com. I have a personal website as well. It's uh, just my name and last name, onepover.com. Just just reach out there. It's a v- very simple website, just talking about me a little bit. Okay, moranpober.com, M-O-R-A-N-P-O-B-E-R, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Very good. Well, we're going to wrap up for today, uh, Moran. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. It was certainly entertaining for me uh, because I'm familiar with uh, the the trials and tribulations of trying to be a marketing guy. Uh, b- before we go, do you have any final thoughts for our audience? I think it's something that I wish someone would tell me back then. And even if someone told me, I probably didn't listen. Um, just, just find a way to be happy today and be grateful today and do things that excite you today. And everything else will, will fall into place. Sage-like wisdom. Thank you very much for that. And uh, so, hey, to our listeners, uh, thank you for joining us. If this story's had an impact on you and you want to reach out to Moran and learn more about uh, what he does with acquiring businesses, uh, you can visit his website, abdassets.com, uh, and his email is moran, M-O-R-A-N, at abdassets.com. 
Uh, the best way you can show your appreciation to us is to write a detailed review on iTunes and so we can continue to gain exposure, get the message out. Uh, until next time, remember this, failure is a fact of life. Whether or not it defines you is a personal choice. Thanks, Moran. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you here next time at How to Lose Money. future episode. Until next time.